All right, so it's time to get ready. And first we're gonna start off with my hair. So to start off, I'm using this scalp detoxifying serum and you're supposed to put it on the scalp and then rub it in, leave it in for three to five minutes and then shampoo the hair. I use this every now and then because honestly, I usually forget about it, but this does make the scalp feel really good and it just helps to cleanse it before you actually do the shampoo. Whenever I change up my hairstyles, I love to reset my hair by washing it. I do shampoo my hair now more often than I used to. So I'm shampooing with this Vegamore shampoo and also the conditioner. What I love about this shampoo is that a little honestly goes a long way, but because I'm heavy handed, I normally end up taking way more than I actually need. But this really does get wicked sudsy very, very quickly. And now from conditioner, I'm using the same one from Vegamore. I am very heavy handed when it comes to conditioner simply because I like for my hair to be really soft and I like for there to be a tremendous slip when I am brushing through my hair. So to be honest, a tube like this will last me maybe two, two and a half washes. So I take a huge chunk of this and then putting it through my hair. You may do your wash Stay differently where you separate the hair into sections, but I ain't got time for all of that. And honestly, with all the silk presses, my curls have loosened a lot more than they usually are. So this just works for me. And then I'm using this Pattern Beauty detangling brush to brush through my hair. The key is to make sure that there's an ample amount of water mixing in with the conditioner so that once I brush it through, it's easy. And then of course you want to start from the end of the hair and then work your way to the root. It may look like I'm being a little rough but I know my hair, I know my scalp, and it just works for me. And then I rinse it out. Now I love a good leave-in conditioner and I have been blowing through this Cantu one. As a reminder, all products are linked down below. I love how affordable this one is and one big glop <laughs> works for my whole head. And I really do put it in very haphazardly. Again, this is what works for me. And I massage it into my hair, squeeze out the excess water, and then twist it up, clip it. And then that is the end of my hair routine, at least for this step. And now I'm gonna wash my ears and the back of my neck. So I love to use this Panoxyl face wash or any face wash that has salicylic acid in it because it's oil soluble. It's gonna break down any oil grease on the skin and that is just key, okay? So doing that on both of my ears and the back of my neck. And then I also like to do this same wash on my armpits and groin area because it kills the odor causing bacteria. If you've been here and you know, then you just know, okay? Go ahead and do it. I guarantee your dermatologist will recommend it as well. And now I'm washing my face with this Naturium Niacinamide Face Wash, which I've been enjoying. It has a nice slip to it. It feels gentle and it gets sudsy in the most beautiful way. So of course I need to wash my face after I wash my hair. It's not something that I do beforehand because again, residue from the hair and the product get onto the skin. Gotta make sure you wash the face, the ears, the neck, and then you move on to the body. I've been enjoying these Naturium body washes and this is a nice in my body wash as well. It feels very good on the skin. Love to use it, gets very sudsy as well. This sponge that I'm using, the exfoliating body sponge, which in Ghana we call Sapo. I'm gonna also link below. I got this particular one on Amazon, but works really well. I literally exfoliate my skin every single day because that's what I'm used to and it just works for me. And when it comes to the body, I love to smell good every chance that I can get. So I'm using this Chanel Coco Mademoiselle body lotion, which smells so freaking good. So just imagine putting this on and then spraying the fragrance on top. Talk about long lasting performance. If you have a body cream or body lotion that matches your fragrance, this is the best way to get this to last as long as possible. You know I love to smell good, okay? So now it's time to do the skincare. And while I was actually lotioning myself, I did put on this Suloasu first care activating serum. Let's do some more because my skin has gotten a little bit dry, but not so dry, which is nice. So let's put some more. I always avoid my eyebrows, but the skincare is so important even before the makeup. And there are chapters here in the description box if you want to just jump to the makeup as well. Vitamin C is so key, especially in the morning. This works so well with your SPF. This is the Pharmacy 10% Waterless Vitamin C Serum. It literally feels like an oil. And I took two pumps of that going around the eyebrows. This is going to lighten dark spots, really important to use during the daytime. You can also use vitamin C on your body. So if you have any extra product and or just feel like it, use a vitamin C on a body, baby. It's gonna take a little longer in general to lighten dark spots on the body, but this stuff works all over the skin, okay? Now this may look alarming to you because it's very <laughs> dewy and glowy, but I love for my skin to look like this. Even if I want my makeup look
look to turn out to be matte, you know? Oh, and then excess, feel free to put it on the hands because the skin of the hands, neck and chest and face do show signs of aging. I should have done my neck and chest, but I already had to lose my body. I always have to remember. It's just a thing that needs to be remembered. Moisturizer, we're going fancy today with a La Mer Moisturizing Soft Cream. I really wanna finish this and it does feel good. This is lightweight. Choose whichever moisturizer you prefer for the morning time. I know I used a lot. I'm just heavy handed, I don't care. <laughs> I just love to make sure that the skin all over my body is tremendously hydrated. Let's bring this down to the neck and chest. Left over on the hands, let's not waste. Today's eye cream is the Ula Henriksen Banana Bright Eye Cream, baby. Start at the bottom. Don't forget the top of the eyes. And I'm always trying to make sure that I avoid my microbladed brows, but you know, get the corner of the eyes right there. It's easy to skip that part. And that part is important, okay? And I'm being gentle. I can't lie though. Sometimes I just rush right through this. But I wanna show you that you really should be gentle with the skin around the eyes. Now you should see a little bit of a glow, you know, just all the things. I love that. Don't be alarmed. We need to add our SPF. This is a Shiseido clear SPF stick, honey. Rub this all around the face. Just makes applying sunscreen so stinking easy. Like, come on. All right, now it's time to do some makeup. I am, of course, starting with my lip primer. You know how that goes. I live by a lip primer. I'll link the MAC one below. I hate that this e.l.f. one is discontinued. I always say it because I really like this one. I'm gonna use this NARS Soft Matte Primer. I wish it worked miracles. It doesn't on my skin, but the thing about makeup and skincare is you really need to try it for yourself and see how it works for you. So does this make me tremendously matte? No, but I do just wanna use a primer today. I'm gonna use my matte foundation, which is this one right here from Fenty. Now, before that, let's do the Sephora Translucent Powder on top of the primer before I actually do my foundation. So here I am taking some of this product on this Sephora 99 brush and pressing it into my skin. Now this will help to increase the mattification. Is it gonna keep me completely dry? Like. No, it's actually a beautiful day outside today. It's gonna to be 75 in Houston. And my goal is just to stay decently matte, okay? There are more things that I could do, like use the Urban Decay spray, which just it's just not in front of me, so that's why I can't use it right now. But I could use that, which is very mattifying, you know? Like there's just some ways that you can build up or amplify the mattification if you really, 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 really wanna be dry. This is the Fenty Pro Filter Foundation in the color 485. Love this shade. And lately I have been putting my foundation onto the face like the girlies do. <laughs> that doesn't mean that I've evolved from putting it back in my hand. That is just definitely a makeup artist part of me that I just have to maintain. But look at this shade and how beautifully it matches my skin. The thing about this Fenty foundation is you do need to move fast. This is a Morphe E63 brush. It dries very quickly. And you can imagine that this combined with the powder that I put on before for will make it dry even faster in the best way. I like how this just grips to my skin and just stays put, you feel me? I always hold a tissue to wipe off the excess if I need to. I'm using pouncing motions, as you can see, and just going on the edge of my face, but not too much to create a harsh line. Pouncing so I can get full coverage and then going over my eyebrows because that's just what I choose. I like to make my eyebrows with makeup look different than my eyebrows without makeup. This color matches me so nicely. Just look at that. For concealer, I have been enjoying this Lancome Tante Idol Ultra Wear All Over Concealer. This is the shade 500 and it just blends so beautifully. Like what? I did a campaign with Lancome actually and I like this. I hadn't used the concealer until that time and I really do like this. So I already washed my beauty sponges. Make sure you watch my video that explains the difference and just how to make sure it's actually damp and not soaked. 
This is almost dry, but it's it's good. It's still gonna use this because it's gonna work beautifully. It feels cold and that's the key. You want it to feel cold, but not soaked. And just look how this shade blends so beautifully. And I hope that you know that if you change your foundation shade, the shade of your concealer, if you if that does remain the same, will end up looking a little bit differently. I love how this concealer actually looks like it has an olive undertone to it in a way. It just works, yo. This bead blender is a staple. You know what I'm saying? But of course I do love these Elf cosmetic sponges too, a lot more affordable. I'll link both of those below. And all links again are gonna be linked down below. So we're blending and you see, I just did that so effortlessly. We are blending this into place and then I went over the harsh lines like so, so that they don't exist. We still want the highlight to be there, but we don't want there to be any harsh lines. Now, still with the shade 500, I'm gonna highlight my forehead. It has come to my attention that not everyone is highlighting their forehead. I think that's so strange to me though, but don't be offended if you don't, you don't. But if you highlight your forehead, let me know in the comments or if you don't I want to know too and just curious to know why do you feel like it's just too much product does it not look good on you do you not like it do you not know how I just want to know because that just came to my attention and I was just like wait what w why what's what's happening here so blend that a little bit and then I take some of the product that is left on the sponge and I go under the cheek area I do the same here for above the lip I get some product essentially and then I go under the cheek because this is going to reverse highlight or reverse contour because you see it isolates out this area here making it look like I've already contoured but I have not and this is where using a foundation that is darker than my skin tone comes into play because I'm gonna highlight a lot like you can see and then if my foundation were to be too dark for me it would actually work out because now it would look like a contour you see what I mean if that makes sense to you comment and let me know and then blending out the forehead to me this just looks so effortless and this is why if my foundation foundation were to match me too much or if it in my opinion were to be too light when I do this part right here my whole face will look too too light so the foundation has to be a smidge deep and in my opinion it just matches a lot better I could bronze but I really just want to contour right now so we pull back some of this because I still need my hair to dry okay we still need the hair to dry it is wet right now for the most part except for the front the less dense parts of the hair are gonna dry faster so around my hairline dries quickly this is dry but then once we get here going where it's more dense, more hair, it's gonna still be wet. So I'm just lifting this a little bit so that it doesn't get stuck to the front parts of the hair that are already dry. And I also don't want this to mess up my contour because I still need to contour, you feel me? It gets ashy, so just take your spit. Hello? We are not afraid of our spit. Yeah, change the finger, take your spit. Let's get this going, okay? Praise the Lord. This is basically isolated out our contour area for us, honestly, with the hairline. Just take any fluffy brush, honestly. And this is the Kat Von D Cream Foundation. This is the shade Deep 098. And then I'm focusing right here, which is where it was already isolated because we did the highlight, right? So right up in here. And then we go to the hairline, taking more product and I'm going section by section to make sure that everything is where it needs to be. Now this might look really stark and wild for you, but it's all gonna come together, don't worry. Little by little, pouncing it. This is dark in the best way. I just love how deep this is to give me that contour. And I love using a cream foundation because cream just melts into the skin so beautifully. Right into that hairline, honey. And then I'm gonna take this Sephora 57 brush and pinch it with my nail and go right here on the side of the nose to contour my nose. Bring it into the brow, right into the front of the brow. It makes such a huge difference. So I've wiped off my brush as best as I can. And now I want to just use this to blend this heart. Ooh, to blend the harsh line a little bit. <laughs> Ooh, it did take up the contour more than I wanted there, but we're going to fix that one more time and do the same over here. Now I'm taking the butt of this sponge and going over all of that to really blend that out. Do you see how I just twisted the sponge? So this is where it was, right? So the highlight is here, the contour on the bottom. Same for this side, so that we're not putting the contour into the highlight. Now it really did blend nicely, almost seamlessly. You may even feel like it took some of the highlight away, but let's be reminded that the setting powder I'm gonna use to set my highlight is going to further intensify this highlight. So this right here is the Huda Glowish Luminous Pressed Powder in the shade Medium Tan. I love to use this with my Sephora 99 brush. So taking some of this, because of the angle, it's just so perfect. Let me make sure that there are no harsh lines or no creasing under the eye. <laughs> Gotta look up. And then here we are, right under the eye. 
and down this side of the nose. And do you see how this not only sets the concealer, but also gives a highlight to the under eye area. Same on the other side. Then I'm going in a check mark motion. I love how this looks, especially on a sunny day. I love how a frosty, luminous under eye just looks. It just looks so good. And now I like to use a matte highlighting pressed powder to set the other parts of my face. This is a powder foundation, but I'm, it's a pressed version. It's not loose, right? So it's compact pressed powder. And this is a lighter shade. So that's why it's a highlighter. It's not called a highlighter, but if the shade is lighter, then it's gonna be a highlighter on you, okay? And then I'm setting all the other places where I put my highlight concealer because I want it to still remain light, but I also wanna take away the shine that is there. You could keep it like that if you like for your skin to look more hydrated if you are in a colder weather climate then for sure just leave it like nice and satin looking you know but i want to mattify all this down baby and really and truly it just further highlights everything so if that number 500 in the concealer wasn't bright enough for me using a lighter shade of a powder would amplify the brightness so there are different ways to achieve a lighter highlight you know me i like to explain so i hope this makes sense to you and if not you gotta comment and let me know i don't need to set this now now, it's not necessarily to set it. It could if you, it could or it couldn't. Like I said, if you wanted to keep your face more satin, then there would be no need to set the concealer like I did, right? The under eye, definitely want to set that, especially for me at my age. I mean, the creasing is natural, so setting it is just good. I wouldn't want that to be all like gooey looking. But the face itself, the outside of the face, you could just leave it. Now, when it comes to the contour, I could leave that as well and just leave it looking satin, dewy, but I don't want it to be that way. And that's where I go in with this, again, powder foundation. This is the Elf Cosmetics Chemo Powder foundation in the shade Rich 660N. This is where I would use this. It's not a must, but what I also use it for because this shade is very deep is to deepen the shade of my contour. This is deep. I'm satisfied with this, but I like to do a little extra. You feel me? So I take this LYS powder brush and I take a little bit of the product and I go over it to knock out the shine and give me a little bit more deepness. You ain't gotta do all of this, but I really do like how it looks. And then I take what's left over on this brush and go on my chin. I don't do anything else to the chin area because I don't want this to be full of product. That's how it be getting all over you and it just be looking like too much in my opinion. So that's where I do this part right here. Now, you know, if you've been here that I never just leave my face like this, I just could not. Look how stark the difference is between the highlight and the contour, you know? Like not gonna work for me. And this is where I then take my Sephora 80 brush. It's at an angle because of how I use it, but it's not an angled brush. And then I use this one size by Patrick Sta. Ta? Sta. There's too many, there's two different Patricks. Patrick Sta powder foundation in the color Dark 4G. I like that this gives me a goldenness to my makeup because I just like to look golden. Hello? I go over everything except the contour with this product, right? Right here in the middle of where the contour and the highlight meet. And then I go over the highlight because of this area right here next to my nose. And right here in between the contour and the highlight, I go over with this. And then I just briefly go over everything so that it can all just look more seamless. I want everything to come together, okay? This makes a huge difference. If you're not using a face powder, I want you to comment, let me know, and let me know why. All right, is your face, well, okay. Let me, let me, I stand corrected because you really could get away with not using a face powder if your contour and your highlight aren't that different from one another. So I like for my contour and highlight to be dramatic. So yeah, you actually could get away with not doing this. So I wiped up my brush as you saw, and now I'm just going over everything one more time to further ensure that everything is seamless. Okay. Now I love a good cream highlight. I've been enjoying this rose ink one. In fact, I need to wipe. You ever see this in your product that's just oil and excess product that needs to be cleaned honestly so take your paper towel and wipe that off and then you should not see any of that gunk anymore. Now we've unearthed the product, which now when you use it, you're going to get way more pigment from it because it's not caked up with extra product. Like, look at that. <laughs> Very pigmented. And then I took a clean finger and I'm going over it. Do you see how that just made it very subtle? I love my lip. A different clean finger to blend that out. Taking some more above the lip and right here under the lip. 
And now the highlight is done, right? We did the concealer highlight and then the actual frosty looking highlight. There are two different highlights. And I'm explaining all this for my beginners because I know that it can be confusing. Now we could do a cream blush, but I don't feel like that today. That's just like too much work right now. I'm gonna use this Beauty Bakery Snackaroons blush in the shade Hey Pumpkin. This is so cute. This is the Sephora Pro Powder Brush in the number. 59 and I tapped off excess starting at the apple of the cheek and making my way back. And that's because I'm comfortable in knowing how this blush performs. But if you don't know how the blush performs, if it's your first time using it, start more toward the back of the cheek and then come into the front, okay? Because where you put your blush first is going to give you the most pigment. And if you don't know how pigmented that blush is, you might resent the way that it looks, okay? But I've used this so many times. Now I took too much right there, if you noticed really fast. So I took the blush under my eye, just a smidge. And that's not terrible because I know that this blush can be worked up. It's not so pigmented that right away, it's like, whoa, orange. Do you see? I can work it and work it and work it and build up the color. If this were a blush that was extremely pigmented right away, I would resent the fact that I had gotten some under my eye, you know, like mistakenly, it would be an issue to try to fix it, okay? Just know that there are blushes that you can really work with and there are blushes where you're like, whoa, I need to know what I'm doing off rip before I even try this blush or I'm be looking ridiculous. So here I am building up some more blush blush as you can see i want to be orange today it's nice outside okay now i am wearing a pink dress i should have worn a pink blush right oh my god ah! you could always take another color and just highlight the cheeks right here on the rosy part the on the the apple part and it would just look so so pretty I did my eyebrows using the Charlotte Tilbury Brow Chi in the shade Natural Black. And now I used Black Opal Maple Concealer, the shade is maple, under my brow and highlighting it this way and then blending it down with this Real Techniques brush. Honestly and truly is a vibe. Like I could leave it just like this, but I am gonna use my powder foundation as an eyeshadow for a quicker, soft glam makeup look, right? That I think that really anyone can and should be able to do, I would like to say. So here I am taking this product under my brow like so, and then I go right underneath where the line is to further carve that out. So I go on the skin first, and then I go and carve it out. That way, the majority of the product is already down before I do the carve, because I don't want it to be caked up right underneath the actual eyebrow. And see how toward the back here, I'm stippling this in a way, just means pouncing, because I don't want that to be too much of a harsh line. Let's blend this out, blending it downward. Like so. Now with this Sigma E61 brush, I'm gonna take the powder foundation right over my lid like so. And this is a wicked easy look that I would do for work most days that I just did not have enough time. I know you're thinking like, this is an easy look? Yeah, this was a quick look that I would do for work when I didn't have that time to be doing all kind of color and stuff. Go ahead and do this, you feel me? Isolating out the brow bone so that that highlight is still there. So as you can see, I used the milk chalk, milk color chalk on the inner eyes so that I could highlight back. So I think it looks so pretty. And then I did eyeliner under my eye and on top, again, all links are below. And now for some mascara, this is Too Faced Better Than Sex. I'm gonna put this on the top lashes. And when it comes to applying my mascara, I like to go underneath, left to right, on the top, left to right, and then under, 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 just at a fast paced motion, but also going left to right in a way. It's <laughs> just like a whole bunch of movements, even twirling it while I'm going up left to right. It's just a mixture of those motions in an effort to get the product on the lash, you know? Even though I'm gonna put lashes on, I still like to make sure that my mascara is on in the best way. And this eye look is really great to isolate out the lashes. When I do the soft glam version where I do the brown smoky eye, of course, it's deeper, darker, more sultry, sexy, still love it. But this one allows for the eyes to really shine. Now here go these lashes that I've worn and worn and worn, honey. Let's take off as much 
glue as possible and then re-glue it and then throw them on. I be letting my glass glue dry too fast, too stinking much and I be doing something and then I don't realize that the inner corner of my left eye don't be having enough glue on it. And then I be looking at videos and I be like, my lash is hanging off, like how? You know, I hate it. I hate it so much. This is the Kiss I Envy. I don't know if it's the glue. I think it's me, girl, I don't know. But I'll tell you one thing, bonding glue never did me like that. Bonding glue never did me like that. And I know bonding glue ain't for the eyes. I stopped using it over a year ago, but bonding glue never did me like that. Okay, so I do let it get a little bit tacky while I do something else, which, okay, at this point, I'll do my lip. This is the Rare Beauty Kind Words liner in the shade Strong. I like this a lot. This is so cute. Now, when I line my lips, I like to make sure that I'm bringing it down right here in this, what do you call this? The peak of the lip? That's important because I want that to be isolated out, you know? And I make my liner very thick, almost as if it's a lipstick on the whole lip, right? Just a little bit is open in the middle. And honest to God, if you want it, you can do a gloss in the middle and call it a whole good night. But I am gonna do a lipstick in the middle. Now, I always tell you about these lashes give me a headache. So let me put these lashes on now before they act stupid, okay? I place them in the center of my lash. Then I go to the outer part and then I go in the middle. And then I do like to let them sit for a second and dry some more because they're not dry enough. They're not tacky enough, but I just am sick and tired of having my lashes falling off. So the way you know that your lash glue is just perfect is when you put it on, if it feels cold. It needs to feel cold and wet. If it's dry when you put it on, it ain't sticky enough, there's something wrong, you feel me? <laughs> now I'm pressing the lashes to my skin because it needs to stay, for God's sake. I love to use this Revlon clamper thing to then press the lashes together because I have my nails on, I can't press the lashes together effectively. So here we are. Now, if you were liking this style of video, you gotta comment and let me know if you've made it this far. I know this is long and detailed, but I'm having a good time filming it and I wanna know if you're enjoying it. So you gotta comment and let me know, baby. Now my lower lashes. I love to use this Lawless Mascara, okay? This just works so good under my lashes. I can't go without it, you know? Same thing, you wanna interchange with the left and the right, the twisting it down, twisting it under. Just the whole nine yards. All right, and then for the lip, I'm gonna use this e.l.f. Cosmetics lipstick that I've already used in a lip swatch video. It's not gonna match my dress perfectly, but it's still gonna be in the pink family, which I think will look really pretty on this bright, sunny day. This is the shade Dirty Talk. Very affordable drugstore. Satin lip and just so cute. It's giving baby doll. Now the key with that brown liner was to help to give a contour to the lip. And then I like for the lip to blend more outward, but if you don't like the inner part of your lip to be so bright, you could have kept it where there was more brown. So if you wanted more brown, you can add more brown right now and then blot, blot, blot until there's more brown that closes in on the lip. But I like for there to be a lot of the center color, in this case, a lot of the pink. I love that. And this is a satin lipstick. So I am gonna take this with me today because it'll wipe off easily versus me using a matte lipstick, which is not gonna come off. So this is a put it in your purse kind of lipstick. But for this price, this is so pretty. What do you think? Come here, let me know. All right, let's take off this. And you'll see a little bit of white. Don't be alarmed. Take your saliva or some water, not too much, because you don't want to unearth the molding that we've done already. But you know, just fix that a little bit. Then I'm gonna use the Colorwell product to fill in my edges just a little bit, and then we'll get dressed. <laughs> 